Hello and welcome to Arts Overlook. I'm your host, John Stanish. Today we'll be focusing on an important exhibit at the Hearst. The latest episode of Arts Overlook starts right now. Art is thriving in the Cedar Valley. It's everywhere. But if you don't know where to look, you could miss it. This is your local arts perspective. This is the Arts Overlook. Paul Roland Smith is an artist um, whose work is represented in the collection at the Hearst Center. He was a painting professor at UNI back when it was the Iowa State Teachers College. He taught there in the 50s and 60s. He was actually Gary Kelly's first painting professor. There was a sort of progression. He taught Dean Schwartz. Dean Schwartz taught Roy Behrens. Um, it's, it's interesting to see the, the, the people who have passed down their, you know, their knowledge and helped to educate the next generation. He was instrumental in really helping the collection at the University of Northern Iowa and getting things like um, a painting by Philip Guston, which is loved by the students, and um, some other important pieces. These works uh, at one time were very controversial. In 1959, the Grout Museum mounted an exhibit of work by teachers at the University of Northern Iowa from the art department. And there were two paintings by Paul Smith that were depicting nudes. Um, some of the other paintings were also of nudes, but Paul's were unfortunately the only ones seen as distasteful and were removed at the behest of two mothers who thought they were inappropriate for children. One person wrote in and said, well, if this were an advertisement selling toothpaste or something, it would be okay. You could be very suggestive in that, but a piece of art is considered obscene because it has a nude body in it. <laughs> All of the people who wrote to the Courier were taking a stand against censorship. The artist Jesse Loomis talked about how once you can get past their bodies and how they're drawn, how much of a shock it is to see somebody without a neck or you know, somebody writhing in agony or sadness, um, how people are just so interested in them once you get over that initial shock of their oddness. A similar show was displayed in Independence after the one in Waterloo that cre uh, created such a uh, stir and passed, you know, without comment. While we might not have the exact works that were in that show, we have things that are very similar. When I was installing this exhibit, I invited some of, um, some of the staff and some people who had come into the gallery to take a sneak peek and sort of talked about the controversy that was behind some of these pieces. And I was surprised to see that um, this image of a pregnant bride was still offensive to young people. Once you get over the fact that they're not beautiful necessarily, don't have long necks and you know beautiful poses, they're depicting just people without the things that describe them, their clothes and mm -hmm. what that says about them as a person, but more as human beings. It just sort of strips away the cultural, um, you know, the things that might um, set them apart and, and shows their basic humanity. And just recently, we were given the opportunity to show a lot of his work um, thanks to Jerry and Dean Schwartz of Decora. You know, he does have a really, really impressive collection. The Schwartzes uh, shared with us that um, when they visited Paul Smith's house, they noticed um, in his garage he had a whole bunch of his paintings and they weren't being well taken care of. And so they decided to take care of them hang them in their home, and share them with places like the Hearst Center. The ceramic vessel at the beginning of the exhibit is a form thrown by Dean Schwartz and then decorated by Paul Smith. There's one painting that was really important to uh, Dean that shows how, as humans, we judge each other and see how we measure up. Because in the next gallery, we'll be showing an exhibit of Dean's work, I thought he would really like if I put that at the entrance of his show so that he can be judged by his fellow artists and um, people visiting the gallery. 
Some of these pieces definitely show a sense of humor, and you know, some of the the one that I'm thinking of um, most is a sort of a self-portrait of Paul Smith that Dean Schwartz has in his living room, where he's holding the rods that signify that that, that he's a pharaoh. <laughs> From what I understand, he told a lot of jokes. He was a people person. He always invited students over to his house, always fed them, spent one-on-one -on -one time with his students, cared about their growth. Sweet. It's important for Dean, I think, that he can share with the people that are going to come see his pieces who his teacher was, how he cares for him, and the things that he had to say to the world. In the spirit of the humor of Paul Smith, I, it was important to me to, to focus on the, the fleshy aspect of some of the people in his paintings. And so, in the spirit of humor, I decided to make this wall his fleshy pink. Maybe lend a little bit of beauty to these beings that are seen as sort of grotesque or unattractive. You start to see their feelings. Um, what they mean to each other, they're beautiful. Big thanks to Emily Drennan and Martin Arthur for all they do to preserve, present, and promote our historic local art. And Dean Schwartz for generously sharing his collection with the Hearst. And if you liked this episode, feel free to share it with your friends on social media. And while you're at it, why not subscribe to our YouTube channel? That's all for this episode of Arts Overlook. I'm John Stanish. Thanks so much for watching.